Welcome to the Investment Banking Intern Diaries. Let me explain what's going on. So I'm currently on a 10 week internship program at a bulge bracket bank within the investment banking division. So through these episodes, I'm going to share with you guys my personal experiences and insights of working in investment banking, looking at some of the things that we did inside of work, so at the desk, some of the stuff we might have done as interns outside of work. I'm going to try and share some advice and tips for anyone who thinks that this career path could be for them. We're also going to look at some traits that I've seen have helped people in these industries rise to the very top and everything in between. As interns, I feel like we're in a unique position in that we've almost got one foot firmly planted in the ecosystem of the firm we're working at. But at the same time, because we're still just interns, we've still got that one foot placed firmly in the outside world. And I feel like that gives us the unique advantage of being able to see things for how they really are. And I hope I bring that insight with me through these episodes. So once again, welcome to the Investment Banking Intern Diaries and let's get to it. So I'm now in my team office and I'm at my desk for the summer and this is where most of the work gets done. So in terms of day to day as an intern, what time you might expect to arrive at your desk, what time you might leave your desk, no two days are really the same, but generally it might look something like this. For me and in our team, usually we try and arrive at our desks at 9.30 in the morning. The first few minutes or hours might be just sort of admin related tasks. So checking your emails, stuff like that, maybe actioning some points that you missed out during the night then I'd say that usually from 12 to 2 p.m. that's where most people will try and grab lunch and depending on how busy the day is you might have to eat lunch at your desk. So as we're working throughout the day at least in our team because we're quite flexible between working at the office and actually working from home you might see the senior bankers leave the office maybe around 5 p.m. or 7 p.m. to continue working from home. So by half seven Usually it's the more junior bankers that are here, but obviously there are exceptions. And then anywhere from half seven to let's say 10, 11, midnight, maybe even a bit later, that's when the more junior bankers might leave. But I'd say on any given day, the majority of people are gone by usually like 11 p.m. A quick bit of advice for anyone who's looking to pursue a career in investment banking, become proficient in PowerPoint and Excel because especially at the start, you'll be using it a lot. I remember during training, one of the analysts was showing us some Excel and PowerPoint shortcuts that we could use. And he explained how the certain shortcuts would save us two to three seconds of productivity. And that seems a bit crazy because, you know, how can two to three seconds really do much for you? But when you're on PowerPoint and Excel for hours every single day, those two to three seconds can really end up making your work a lot more productive and then hopefully make sure you can leave a bit earlier. Now, I'm a firm believer that private success precedes public success. And to relate that to careers, all that means is the people who we see succeeding publicly and whatever that means in a job setting. From what I've seen, a big component of that open success is taking out time to develop yourself personally when no one's watching behind closed doors. And I can see this just by looking at my fellow interns or by looking at the people in my team. You know, these are all brilliant people and high achievers by any metric of measurement. And one common trait that's undoubtedly helped them get to where they are right now is discipline. Now on the topic of discipline, one thing that I came across recently that I found quite fascinating was this equation that involves discipline. And the equation went like this. It said that discipline equals freedom. I think this concept was coined by someone called Jocko Willink. And if you don't know who Jocko Willink is, definitely go and search him up. He's got a lot of wise words. So what Jocko Willink basically uses this equation to explain is that first and foremost, every single person wants more freedom. And that can be any kind of freedom, whether it's time freedom, physical freedom, financial freedom, everyone wants more freedom. But Jocko Willink says that in any case, the quickest and most efficient route to freedom 
is actually going to be discipline. Admittedly, when I first heard that equation, it didn't really make too much sense to me because I've never really seen discipline and freedom as two things that go together. In fact, it almost seems like the opposite. But when he explains it, it starts to make perfect sense. Because if we look at it practically, let's say we want more time freedom. Time freedom is going to be a direct result of how disciplined we are with our time management. And through doing that, it's going to create that time to focus on the things that we wanna do in life. And same thing for physical freedom. Obtaining physical freedom is going to be a direct result of being more disciplined with your diet or maybe motivating yourself to go for that spinning class even when you don't feel like it. And much the same with financial freedom. Financial freedom is going to be a result of being more financially disciplined. So maybe that means saving that money and investing it rather than just blowing it on something you don't need. I was talking to one of the associates in our team over dinner and he explained how he had recently completed an Ironman. Now, for those who don't know, an Ironman is like a triathlon with a 2.4 mile swim, an 112 mile bicycle ride, and a 26.2 mile run. I think the fact that he was not only able to complete this Ironman, but also find the time to train for it, you know, alongside working a demanding full-time job, is just a testament to how much discipline people in this industry have been able to develop within themselves. So for anyone looking to work in this kind of career, or any kind of career to be honest, I think discipline is really helpful. And I also think that discipline is a lot easier to intentionally build and develop when you realize that the end goal of discipline is always going to be more freedom. We're currently here in the gym, personally, I like to go to the gym like one, two, three times a week. But going to the gym while working this kind of role is a lot more spontaneous in that you can't really just schedule the time and be 100% sure you'll make that time because if something work related comes up, then obviously that takes priority. So what I try and do is be a bit more spontaneous. I try and pack my gym bag every day. And then whenever I find that window or pocket of time, just go to the gym. Big set now. Let's see how it goes. How many reps? Um, how many you think? How many should I go for? Five, three, three. <laughs> I was gonna say five, but I thought, you know, I'll try. I'll try five, but I don't know. We'll see how many. Okay. Okay, let's go. This is the motivation you need, man. <laughs> oh come on, get out! Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Easy. Yeah, drive, 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 drive. <laughs> Ooh, stars, seeing stars. Right. <laughs> Just starting the system out here. <laughs> How long's the session? The session, yeah, true, good point. I mean, usually I try and keep it to an hour because okay. you can't, you know, be in it for too long. Yeah. Especially the 4G's not working and then you get a call from one of your seniors, you know, it's not a good thing. No, but honestly, you know, when you've been working for the whole day at your desk, you just, you know, sort of maybe doing PowerPoint or Excel, going to the gym is almost like a detox. Mm. You can just relax, you know, you just chill out, clear your mind, it's quite good. Yep, so we're done with that. Um, we're gonna get into some pull-ups now, and then we're gonna wrap up the session. We are done. Okay guys, so we're done with the workout now. It was a good one. Time now is around 9 p.m. 
So I'm gonna go back, get showered, get back home, maybe finish off some work and then I'm off to bed for the day. So, see you guys there. Yeah, so we're done with the session now. It's around uh, 9 p.m. So I'm gonna get back into the... Start again. Take your time, take your time. Relax, relax, relax. So we're done with the session now. It was a good one. I'm gonna go back into the cab now. Last time, trust him, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs>